everyone. Bless the set. Uh, my name is uh, Brother Matt Town, and I'll be giving y'all the lesson today. The title of my lesson today is The Wise and the Foolish Service. Which one are you? So it's a question. And it was one that I even had to ask myself before coming into the truth or even reading the Bible by looking at examining myself. So that being said, I introduce my brother Matthias, he's gonna be my reader today, and he's gonna open us up the scripture. Once we're done, we get started. And it reads, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he had done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generations to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and might not be as their fathers a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their hearts to right, and though in whose spirit was not steadfast with God, the children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his laws. I've just read the book of Psalms, chapter 8, verses 1 through 10. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing and doing of his holy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Once again, like I said, my name is Brother Natal. My lesson will be the wise and the foolish servant. Which one are you? Mm -hmm. Because we are preparing ourselves for the return of Christ. And he gave us many signs and talked about many things that are going to take place before his return. But with, with that being said, we have to be wise to listen to those signs and, and know what those signs are. So that comes with wisdom. But those who are without, who do not study, who do not read, who do not take heed to the word of God, they're considered foolish. So with that, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started. And uh, I'm going to call out the scriptures. I'm going to tell you the page number on this cat and whoever gets to it first. So. Yeah. We're going to start with Mark chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. Mark chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. Mark chapter 2, verse 18. And it reads, And the disciple of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. Uh -huh. And they came, and they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? And he says, he, he said, the Pharisees asked the question. Mm -hmm. They said, you should fast. See, right here, he's not talking about the day of atonement. Right. He's talking about another fast, because also in those days, the disciples, the, the, the Pharisees used to fast, and Israel used to fast. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about a different fast, and we're going to find out what it is later on in the lesson. Go ahead, my brother. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast? What the Pharisees do, and what the disciples of Jesus are doing. Go ahead, my brother. As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. Uh -huh. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. And then shall they fast in those days. And he said, but the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. Because right now, Jesus is sitting in the third hand, third heaven, 
sitting at the right hand of the Father. Mm -hmm. Because he was crucified, and once he rose again, he, like I said, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He said, but can the children, verse 19, kill the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? That's what the Lord said. As long as they have the bridegroom with them, there's no reason for them to fast because Jesus is with them. He's teaching them. He's guiding them in all things. And the bride chamber is the wedding party. And if you notice, it says bridegroom. So when you think about the wedding, you think about the bridegroom, who is the bride? He said, well, the children of the bridegroom. Those are the servants of God. Those are the children of the bride chamber. The drop down to verse 27, brother God. Verse 27. And verse 27 reads, And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. So the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That's right. So open your spiritual eyes for a minute, brothers and sisters, because he said the Sabbath was made for man. So Jesus is the one that gave them the Sabbath. He's the one that gave the commandments. Go ahead, brother. Verse 28. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. So he said the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. But he said the bridegroom. So open, just think about it for a minute. When you go to a wedding, who do you have to stand before? Somebody to officiate the wedding, right? So, if you go back to Exodus 19, when Moses was talking to the children of Israel, and he got the instructions from the Father, he said, they said, all that the, all that the Lord said we do, we will do. And when you go to a wedding, you got the wife, you got the soon be husband standing here. And you got the minister, they're standing before God. Mm -hmm. And they're giving their vows. And they say, well, do you take this lawfully wedded woman to be your lawfully wedded your wife? That's right. To be obedient, to, to then be forced to be obedient, and, and you go on with your vows. Mm -hmm. That is the same thing the Lord did with the children of Israel. And I can show you that. Let's go to Exodus 24, and I'm going to read one verse, verse 7. Exodus 24 and 7, to show you what I'm talking about. Book of Exodus, chapter 24, and verse 7. Uh -huh. And he took the book of the covenant. He took the book of what? The book of the covenant. So covenant is a Greek, right? That's right. Go ahead. And read it to the audience of the people. And what did they say? And they said, all that the Lord had said, we will do. And what else? And we will be. You see that? Those are some of those wedding vows that you hear about when you go to wedding. That's where the words come from. Because he said, all that the Lord has said, we will do. And he gave the Lord gave him ten commandments. So, but one of those main commandments was keeping the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So the so when the bridegroom come, what will the bridegroom give to his wife? He gives her a ring. So the commandments on the Sabbath day is just like a wedding ring for us. Right. Because we honor that. That's we right. keep it. And what did he do? Go ahead, put verse 8 in there. What did Moses do? Verse 8. And Moses took the blood uh -huh. and sprinkled it on the people uh -huh. and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord had made with you concerning all of these words. He said he took the blood. Yes. And where their blood is, there is blood for remission of sins. He sprinkled that blood which represents that blood of Christ in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So that's what that is. And he's picking the people with it. So you come up under the under, under the blood of Jesus. All right? Let's go to Matthew 25. We're going to pick it up in verse 1. Matthew 25. Okay, brother, go ahead. Look at Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten birds, uh -huh. which took their lamps. Went forth to meet the bridegroom. So they went forth to meet the bridegroom. So we see that we're a bridegroom again. So that's Jesus. He's coming. Mm -hmm. And he's coming for his church. He's coming for his people. Because he's married. We married to him. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. Hold on. So five of them were wise mm -hmm. and five were foolish. 
this one guy was from. The wise and the foolish. Mm -hmm. And what did it say? What else it say about the wise and foolish? They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Mm -hmm. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Okay, let's let's identify these wise and foolish versions because the wise versions are the ones who study and keep the word of God. They're always about the Father's business. They're always reading and studying. Mm -hmm. But the foolish is described as ones who know the word of God, who got it, but don't keep it. They don't study. They're concerned about other things that's going on in the world. Instead of studying the word of God and preparing themselves for the return of Christ. Because we all have to be ready. You don't want to be caught with that at all in your limb. And basically, you are the limb. And that all is the word of God. That's what keeps you full. So when you're running low on that all, that word of God, you got to go pick up your Bible and read it and get full of this word again. Because it's just like a car engine. It needs more. If you don't get that ball, it's going to blow a gas, right? Then it's going to be broke down on the side of the road. Man. Go ahead, brother. Dad. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So Christ is he's, he's delaying his, he's delaying his coming. Mm -hmm. and they all slumbered and slept. And then what happened in verse 6? And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom coming. Go ye out to meet him. So they're going out to meet him. So we're going to go to Matthew 24, one chapter over. Matthew 24. We're going to pick it up in verse 2. We're going to read 2 through 8. We're going to do some skin. Sure. Let me get that, brother. Go ahead. Verse Let's two. Go to Matthew, chapter 24, verses 2. Uh -huh. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Uh -huh. Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another uh -huh. that shall not be thrown down. And he was talking about the temple. Because the temple, Jesus knew the temple was going to be destroyed in 70 AD. So that's what he's telling you about. But go ahead, brother. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciple came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? That's the question. And what shall be the signs of thy coming uh -huh. and of the end of the world? And what did Jesus answer them saying? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. The first sign is the Take heed that no man deceive you. Yes. He say, man, they're not going to come in the name of Allah. They're not going to come in the name of Buddha. Right. They're going to come in the name of Jesus to yes. deceive you. Go ahead, my brother. Saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Now, few going to come in his name. And many shall come in my name. What else are you going to do? And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. Mm -hmm. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. He said you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. And we're already seeing that right now, not the end time. Mm -hmm. You see in Russia and Ukraine fight. You see other brothers with other nations in North Korea and China. Right. So you see all those things. And what else did he say? For nation shall rise against nation, uh -huh. and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine, and pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. So we see there be famines. There's going to be pestilences. We already had, we're dealing with COVID, and we're still dealing with COVID. This yes. hasn't gone anywhere. It's here and here. Right. We heard about the monkeypox. Mm -hmm. Not too long ago. Right. We got uh, diseases that we had in our childhood that are coming back. Meningitis. Yes. As a matter of fact, when you go to college, you have to take a meningitis shot now. Mm -hmm. You have measles coming back. Yes. You shingles and those things of that nature. So all these things from our childhood are coming back, but they're coming back much stronger. So go ahead, my brother. Verse 8. 
All these are the beginning of sorrow. He said, all these are the beginning of sorrow. Because remember Christ said, for all these things must come to pass. So when you see, when we see these things come to pass, we see these things happen, right. that is just preparing us for the return of Christ. Absolutely. Don't get worried, don't fret, don't pack your bag and just take off. Don't get nervous because these are just the beginning of sorrow. They have to come and pass. You have to follow the protocol. So I say, when a wise servant of God, he's reading the book, he understands the signs. So you are different. You don't get worried. You don't get all out of pocket and start freaking out. You stay calm because you know what your Lord is doing. That's right. Because you're in tune with it because you read the word. Because he's giving it to you. Okay, my God, listen. And we're in the same chapter of yeah. Matthew 24. Drop down to verse 32. Read 32 through 34. 32. Uh -huh. And he reads. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. Uh -huh. When his branches yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is not. He said, you know, you know what summer is not. When leaves start to grow, and you see that, 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 that weather change, you know that summer is not. Go ahead. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And Jesus is saying, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And they have not been fulfilled yet. We still have a lot of things to, to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. They're not being fulfilled. So tell us down to verse 37. We read uh, 37 through 39. And it reads, Verse 37. Uh -huh. But as the days of no work, mm -hmm. so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Wait a minute. He said just as the days of no So there be also the coming of the Son of Man. Why are you mentioning that? Go ahead and read 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, mm -hmm. there were eating right. and drinking, right. marrying and giving in marriage. Mm -hmm. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark, uh -huh. and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Right. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So Jesus is referencing back to the beginning, the days of Noah. That's right. He said they were eating, drinking, and married, and giving them marriage. It's the same thing we see today. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more than the sun. That's right. Everybody's going about their business, they're eating. They're drinking, they're shopping, they're doing their party. Mm -hmm. But Lord, he was set apart. The Lord was giving him instruction. So we're going to find out about that. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 6. He said, The days of Noah.
There were giants in the earth in those days. Mm -hmm. And also after that, when the sons of God came into, unto the daughters of men, mm -hmm. and they bare children to them, right. the same became mighty men which were of old, mm -hmm. men of renown. Right. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Wait a minute, you said God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth? Yes. So Jesus said in the days of Noah, and he's showing us this is the same thing that's happening in, in the times that we're living in. We are living in the last days, and we're seeing that. He said the, the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Yes. There's a lot of wickedness going on right now in this, in this nation, in other nations, all over the world. That's right. Go ahead, brother. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So he's saying the thoughts of his heart, which is your mind, is evil continually. So that's letting you know if your mind is not staying on the Lord, you got to kill this old man, this flesh of God. Because it, it doesn't want to be right, it does not want to follow the word of God. Right. Because that's just enough like in this flesh. And Christ said there's nothing good about this flesh. Because when he came to the flesh, he said there's no one good but God. That's right. He was in the flesh. He knew what this flesh and body would do. Mm -hmm. He would try to kill you. And you got to kill that, that old man. Go ahead in verse 6. In verse 6 it reads, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. So he said they repented the Lord. So man, the Lord was sorry that he made man on mm -hmm. earth because of all the wickedness. Go ahead, read, go ahead and read verse 11 and 12. Can we finish that one up? Yeah. Go ahead. And it grieved him at his heart. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Mm -hmm. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his ways upon the earth. Now some flesh had corrupted his ways. All earth. flesh. So all flesh had corrupted his way on the earth. Yes. But what happened to the sons of God? Weren't they the ones supposed to make sure that this didn't happen? Because the son of God, men began to call on God when Seth came along. But see, the children of Cain did not serve God. That's right. And basically, those wives did not want to serve God, and they basically turned their husbands against God. They flipped them. They started serving their gods. The God same God that Cain. They started doing what Cain's children did, took up their way, and became wicked themselves, and fell away from God. But the Lord had one person. There's always a remedy. God always has a remedy to push one person who's going to do what he's supposed to be doing. And there was no. He said no was righteous in all his generation. So he listened to the Lord. He listened to the instruction of the Lord. So that's the that, that's a characteristic of a wise servant. That's right. All right, let's go to Job chapter 21. Now Job chapter 22. I'll be glory to the Father. Uh, no one can come unless the Father draws him. Uh -huh. yeah. I gave up for four years, and uh, he never left me, and I came right back. Look at that. Let us get filled with this word. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Job 22. Job 22 and verses 15, 15. And 17. through 17. Because it said the earth is filled with people. That's right. So let's look at how the corrupt this world was. Go ahead. The book of Job. Chapter 23, 22. Uh, 22, and verses 15. Mm -hmm. It reads, As thou mark the old ways which wicked men have trodden, Look at that. Go ahead. which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overflown with the flood. So we, saw, we see the flood was a one time event. That's, That's right. right. The Lord did. He cut them down with the flood. Go ahead. Which said unto God, Depart from us. They said, What? Read that again. We said unto God, Depart from us. Uh -huh. And what can the Almighty do for them? What can the Almighty do for them? Yes. But these are men who don't serve God. These are not the servants of God. That's right. 
They're against God. They don't want to do anything the Lord instructs them to do. Just as we saw in Genesis 6. Mm -hmm. He said, what can God do for them? And back up and read Job 21. We're going to read verse 6 and 7. It's one page. One page. page. Yeah. 6 and 7. Joe, yes, that's on page 668. That's one page back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Six and seven, and fourteen and fifteen. Go ahead. Twenty-one. Uh huh. Verses six, and it reads: Even when I remember, I am afraid. Uh huh. And tremble, taking hold of my on my flesh. Go ahead. Wherefore do the wicked live? Become old. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are mighty in power. Uh-huh. Drop down to 14. And it reads, Therefore they say unto God, mm -hmm. Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. Go ahead. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? You see, these are all those who, like I said, the foolish servants. Yes. They don't serve God. That's right. And if you look at our, in our generation today, you got all these powerful, mighty people running this nation and many other nations. Of course. And they don't do anything that totally do compare with what the Lord says. They're serving their own best. They're serving and they're doing their own instructions. They're like, we don't need God. What can he do for us? That's right. We are our own God. That's what they're saying. We are God. We don't need God. We can do what, what we need to do in spite of what God says. We can create our own nation, people. Look at all this artificial intelligence we got going on. They're scared of him. Miss Kathy, just imagine somebody can create somebody who looks just like you, talks like you, and you don't even know it. That's what they're doing. That's what they say by the way, the flowers. Yes. There was, a, there was an elderly lady that got scammed out of all her money because she thought it was her nephew calling her, but it was an artificial intelligence voice that they used. That's right. Because that's what these men are doing. Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and all these other rich people that are well to do. They're saying, what can God do with us? Where did you read that? This was uh, 21 what? 21 verses 6 and 7 and 14 and 15. Oh, oh. Okay. So we're going to find out what can we do to become wise servants of God. Let's go to Romans. Chapter 8. Pick it up at verse 14. Get there, brother. Go ahead. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 14. Uh -huh. And it reads, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, uh -huh. they are the sons of God. So what this is saying, as long as we are doing the, the will of God and reading the word of God and studying the word of God, you are. Sons and daughters of God. Amen. That's when you become a wise servant because he said, for well, as many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Spirit of God comes in many forms, but that's another lesson for another day. But if I hear you talking about the Word, the Word of God, go ahead and read that verse 15 with that. So I like this. Go ahead. But ye have not received the Spirit of abundance again. To fear, uh -huh. but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit of adoption, because He wants you to become a member of the God family. That's right. And the only way you can become a member of the God family is keeping His laws, His statutes, His commandments, His dietary law. That's right. Believing in Jesus Christ. That's right. Having your faith in Him. That's where you become a member of the God here, keeping those holy days. That's how. Read verse 16 for good measure. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit. That we are what? That we are the children of God. That we are the children of God. 
then we will be wise servants That's right. and doing the will of God. Let's go to 1 John 3. 1 John 3 and verse 1. Book of 1 John, chapter 3, uh -huh. verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Uh -huh. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew it him not. He said, therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Because when you keep the word of God, you become sanctified, which is set apart from the rest of the world, even your family members. Because when you tell them that you're going to start keeping a dietary law, yeah. and you're not going to eat bacon, uh -huh. pork chops, yeah. pepperoni, pepperoni. <laughs> you know, you're going to start eating clean fish that has fins and scales on them. That's right. right. Not catfish. That's right. Yeah. Not shark. That's right. Not alligator. These are things that are not good for you. The Lord calls those an abomination. Yeah. Even if you touch it, you are unclean until that evening. So that's what the dietary law, because every animal has its purpose. And you know, catfish is just bottom feeding. They clean, they keep the lakes on the ponds and creeks clean. That's right. So that's what he's saying. You and know, also in Deuteronomy, it says, wash your hands. Remember? Yes. I was shocked when I saw this. Yes. yes. Go ahead, Verse 2. Uh -huh. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, uh -huh. and it does not yet appear what we shall be. So he said it does not yet what appear what we shall be. But he said you're going to have a spiritual body because we all going to be changed. That's right. At some point when Christ comes back. You're not going to have a fleshly body because the Father doesn't deal with flesh. He hates flesh because he you knows there's nothing good in flesh. So there's a change is going to come. But that's, once again, that's what the devil is. Go ahead, my brother. But we know that when he shall appear, mm -hmm. we shall be like him. That's right. For we shall see him as he is. As he is. Mm -hmm. And every man that has this hope in him what he do? purifies himself. Even as he is pure. So you have to purify that man and mind from all sin. You have to remove that sin from your life. Because Christ is without sin. That's right. And he is our example, and we can follow that example. That's right. So you have to cleanse your mind up. Okay, let's go to Mark chapter 4 and pick it up in verse 2. And he said unto them, He 
that has an ear to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parables. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in a parable. Oh no. The Lord Jesus has really dropped the nugget right here. Yeah, yeah. He because he says, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Those are the wise servants. church. He's giving them instruction. He's teaching them. They know all the signs of Christ's return. That's right. They know about the commandments. They know about the dietary law. They know about the holy day. They're following the word of God. But he said, but unto them that are without, he speaks those unto prayer because they don't believe the word of God. They don't study to show themselves approved of God. And that's why when you read, go back to Mark chapter 2 again when we begin, it says the Pharisees. Because the Pharisees did not know Jesus. They didn't want to do anything that Jesus said. So they didn't know, they didn't want to follow him. So they're working. That's why I said, ask, why do your servant pray? Because if they had known that the Lord and the Master was with them, they wouldn't have to fast, but they didn't do right. that. So if they go without, they don't understand the word of God. Go ahead, brother. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. That sin they may see uh -huh. and not perceive. Right. And hear they may hear and not understand. Right. Lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? Right. And how then will ye know all parables? Uh -huh. The sower soweth the world. As Jesus sowed the word. Go ahead. And these that are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan come immediately and take away the word that was sown in their heart. So it's just like my seven Matthias and he's talking about the word of God. I can be teaching them about the word of God. Right. Satan was seeing one of his servants to come to take away everything that I taught him. That's right. He will take it away. He will come. Like I say, the thoughts, your mind is where your heart is. That's right. That's your mind in your heart. So we say, because Satan attacks your mind. He can't enter into you. He can only influence you to do something you don't want to do. That's right. So that's that one person. That's the that one person. Go yeah. ahead. Verse 16. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Mm -hmm. Who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with glad. So you hear this word, and you're glad, and you're happy, and you want to take it to your family and just share it with yeah. your family and friends. And you want to tell them about the good ones mm -hmm. to come. You want to tell them about all these things you've learned. But what happens after this? Yeah. And they have no root in themselves, and so endure it, but for a time. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Because a man's enemies shall be those of his own household. You better want to hear that. Yeah. You telling me I can't eat my butcher? Man, get out of my face. Mm -hmm. When you told them that Christmas is Jesus was born on this one twenty five. That's going to cause a lot of strife and division in your home. You got to be ready for that because the Lord is causing this separation. He said, I can't even be a soul. Right. He can't even be a division because he has to separate the sheep from the goats. Go ahead, brother. Verse right. 18. Uh -huh. And these are they which are sown among thorns, mm -hmm. such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of their things, uh, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becoming unfruitful. This is the most dangerous person, place you can be in. Mm -hmm. And when you can say the care of the world, yeah. the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You get caught up in money, material things. Yes. I got the big home. I got the big garage. I got the big car. Yeah. I got the best of everything. But it choked out the word of God because you stop putting God first and you start serving the two. That's right. That's our doctrine. So go ahead, brother. Verse 20. Uh -huh. And these 
are they which are sown on good ground, mm -hmm. such as hear the word and receive it, mm -hmm. and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, right. some sixty, and some a hundred. Mm -hmm. And this is the wise servant, like you said, that good ground. He heard the word. He's not only a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. So he's hearing and doing. That's right. That's basically what all is saying. Let's go back to Mark, uh, Matthew 25. And, uh, and what verse? Pick it up at uh, verse 6. So, brother, we'll get that. Go ahead and read. The book of Matthew, chapter 25, uh -huh. verse 6. Right. And it reads, And at midnight there was a cry made, mm -hmm. Behold, the bridegroom coming. Mm -hmm. Go ye out to meet him. Uh -huh. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamp. Uh -huh. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Go ahead, what they say. But the wise answered, saying, No, not so. Least there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. The door was shut. Stop right there because he said the foolish said to the wise, give us up your oil. Because the foolish servant, he wasn't, he was concerned about the cares of the world. Right. And the deceitful and solution. He wasn't filled with the word of God. Those servants are not filled with the word of God. They're worried about the cares of the world. So now Christ is coming. He's here. And they're not ready. So but those that are wise say, not so. Because you're not going to let a man or a woman steal your plan. Nobody. And they were ready. They were prepared for the coming of the Lord. And they were, when they got ready for the marriage, they came in and they shut the door. Let's read about that marriage, brother. Let's go to Matthew 22. And the oil represents, uh, or anointing the word of God. Word of God. Yeah. Word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Friend, 
how comest thou in heaven, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. He was speechless, because he knew he wasn't correctly dressed. He came in any kind of way. So that tells you when people say you come to the Lord any kind of way, that's, right. that's a lie. That's right. You can't come to the Lord any kind of way. You got to bring your best. Because when you go into a wedding, you put on your best clothes, don't you? Yeah. You put on your best suit, tie, jacket, and the lady put on their best dress. That's and right. You go before the Lord. That's right. Go ahead, brother. Then said the king to the servant, <laughs> bind his hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. Mm -hmm. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called. But few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. The first will be last, and the last will be first. So we're going to find out what that garment is. What, what did he say? He had on the wrong garment. Let's go to Revelation 19 and 7. One verse. <coughs> Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. Upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. 
Because he's got the business of protection around you. Go ahead. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and do them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. A foolish servant. Go ahead. Which built his house upon the sand. On the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Because the foundation was built on sand. That's sand right. Go any kind of way. That's right. It wasn't no rock. Christ is the rock. Mm -hmm. That's Amen. a solid foundation. Yes, sir. So go ahead and go to, go to our last verse. Let's go to Matthew 5, verse 14. Okay, let's go. Matthew 5, verse 14. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, and it reads, Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. So this is Christ talking. He's saying the light of the world, the, the, the city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Why is that? Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, mm -hmm. but under a candlestick. And they give it light unto all that are in the house. Uh -huh. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. So what? That they may see your good works. And do what? And glorify your Father which is in heaven. So he said, you are like that candle that makes a pair of water all in that lamp. Yes. And that lamp will give out that light. And that's what Christ is describing because it can't be hid. Right. Because light and darkness cannot dwell together. When you're walking in that light in the Word of God, people are going to see your characteristics. They're going to see the way you carry yourself. You're going to see the way you talk and how you act and how you love your neighbor. You're not cursing nobody out. You're not mistreating anyone. We treat treating them with love and kindness. He said, love thy neighbor as thyself. That's how you treat your neighbor. Right. And the first four commandments are how you treat your God and honor your God. So you can't hide that under bush. That light is going to come out and it's going to project. When you see people and talk to people about this word, they're going to see the good work. Yes, sir. And you glorify your Father, which is in heaven. So that's the lesson today. The wise and the foolish servant. Which one of you? The choice is yours. That's right. God made you a free agent. He said, choose this day. Life and death, good and evil. That's right. The choice is yours. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. All right. Well, you know, we're going to go ahead and close out with a prayer. Before you know, we'll be done. And it reads. After this manner, therefore, preach. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Give us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, God of Israel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.